dominant Barcelona. Yeah. Shout out. Why? I know. How many times have we said that this season? And just a reminder then that puts Barca uh, second Real Madrid in action against Sevilla. Uh, tomorrow. Meanwhile, Girona are playing on Monday. Uh, Luis Garcia is with us. Luis is a, a former Barca player. Some of these post matches have been difficult uh, to take you through. <laughs> Obviously, all the problems they've had. They were brilliant today. Thank you very much, Dan, for letting me enjoy a little bit of this <laughs> Barcelona because definitely they had a very, very good game. And not very good game in some periods. So at, at, at times, a full 90 minutes of Barcelona dominance, but also under control. Something that, again, Xavi was talking during the game in Champions League. Yeah, we create, we dominate, but we don't have the end product and we don't control those transitions. So in the end, you put in the game a little bit of a gamble. Today, in every single situation, every single aspect, they win the better team in possession, in intensity and create creativity. And at the end, that is the end product. Fantastic goals, good combination and overall a fantastic performance. Probably one of the best of mm. the season. This is a little bit what we want. Now is the consistency what is needed. We saw some a few good minutes against Napoli and now is the moment that this Barcelona get that momentum. A lot of players that have been rotated, so that means that the squad is there to provide and the players who have been involved, they have been good. So fantastic performance. Let's enjoy it. How much is it Barcelona being good mm. and how much is it Getafe not being good? Well, well, Hetafe approached in the game in a manner that was a little bit surprising in the sense of Hetafe were willing to press Barcelona higher up the field and then they were willing to get their lines even higher up the field, making sure that indeed they were going to press the ball, but they never pressed the ball. Mm. And in not pressing the ball and having a high line and a high line that is disorganized where your center backs are ahead of your outside backs, well, that creates space for Barcelona. But Barcelona has faced this in the past and hasn't been able to figure it out, to diagnose the problem, to read the game. And so if there was a theme about today's game, and I think this is a credit to Barcelona, is the runs in behind and passing the ball forward, mm. vertical, in behind taking advantage of the spaces that is available to you. And in order to take advantage of the space that's available to you, it's not just about playing the ball. It's about reading the runs and understanding where the runs are, have to come from and the, where the outside to end. So as Lewandowski shows for the ball, that opens the space for, here we go, Joao Felix to run in behind, Rafinha to run in behind. The center back step with, with Lewandowski, the space is down the middle, the runs are there, the balls were there, and a willingness to Barcelona to play that ball forward and a willingness to Barcelona to run forward. That is not something that we, always, that we always see from Barcelona, in particular from guys out of the midfield. We understand if Joao Felix is able to run in behind or Rafinha is willing to run in behind. But what about Christensen in his goal? Willing to run out of the midfield. We haven't seen that from Barcelona consistently this season. Today, it was there to be showcased because of the spaces available that were provided by Hetafe and their lack of organization defensively. Uh, Luis, who caught your eye for Barcelona today? Well, actually, I got a, a few players that I enjoy watching them play. One of them, of course, is Rafinha. I think he read very well what he has to do, where the runs, where, where the space was. Maybe the, the end product wasn't there. I think the last touch is what he was missing. But he comes from a, a long injury, so it's going to take a little bit of time to, to get the 100% fitness. And one that really, really I'm in love at the moment is uh, Paul Kovarsi. I think that the young man, 70 years old, to play in a team that is having so many problems, where there is so many doubts, having that composure, that personality from the back, having the ball, bringing the ball to, into the midfield with that accuracy, I think is really, really remarkable. He's always focused, never lose the, the position. He's always looking at uh, Araujo, Akunde, where they are, where is my, my, the player that I need to mark. That's really very difficult for a 17 years old guys, very, very young age, to have the control of the tempo of the game, but also all the awareness around it. So to me, for me, it was man on the match today because he was fantastic in defense and much more. When he was needed under pressure, bring the ball to the players into the midfield with fantastic passes to the space. So 100% my man of the match today, Pau Guarsi. It's interesting, Ali, when you look at young players who make a breakthrough, be it at Barcelona or other clubs in Europe, it's not often centre-backs mm. because of that experience that's necessary. Have you been as impressed with him as Luis is? Yeah, I, I think so. And 
and Luis just ad alluded to it, there's a level of maturity to the way that he's reading the game mm -hmm. and what the game calls for in specific moments. And there are times in which, yeah, you know what? We're not going to mess around with this ball. We're going to put it somewhere really far from here. And sometimes Barcelona has been guilty of turning the ball over in a bad area. Kubarsi doesn't seem to be able to, or doesn't seem to be doing that. He makes a good decision in terms of it's now a chance to play the ball out. It's now a chance to find the outlet. It's now a chance to just put the ball in the, in the stands. That level of maturity, which would seem logical, uh, it doesn't quite come as fluid to young players as it does to mature players. And there are a lot of mature players in the Barcelona team. And what, what have we criticized of this team defensively? Some of the decision making. Well, when you compare the decision making of the 17 year old to the decision making of, say, for example, Inigo Martinez or Christensen or Jules Koundé in particular, who has had a tough year, or Joao Cancelo defensively, you kind of go, yeah, it's refreshing to see a player who's able to make good decisions. And even more so when he's 17 years old. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Luis. I look at Pau Cubarsi and he stands out because of the maturity with which he plays. Luis, you're only five points off the top. What about that? And you are trying to take some credit to Barcelona display today because of uh, Getafe not showing up. <laughs> I think that is a moment, moment to enjoy that. And I think it's very important to, to, to embrace the situation. It's five points. But Real Madrid is playing tomorrow against Sevilla. It's not going to be an easy game, of course, Real Madrid. Uh, is showing this capacity of winning. It doesn't matter who is on the field, who is injured or, or against who they're playing. But definitely that's something that we w wanted to, to see a little bit more of uh, a threat for Real Madrid, for Girona, that they left uh, kind of uh, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona in a, in a big gap. We want to see a little bit of uh, excitement until the end of the season and it could be this moment.